to watch more videos about it. As soon as I get a Switch, I'll definitely be playing it. Definitely have you, that. Have you lined one up the ordering from somewhere? Uh, oh, no. I'm still waiting for Crimbo or Black Friday, though I don't think we'll get any good bundles or deals. But yeah, I think Christmas is when it is. I don't want to actually pay for one myself. I don't mm. pay for things. I want people to buy things for me. I think that's what the problem is. Uh, yeah, people are really selfish when they don't buy stuff for you. Yeah, fucking balance. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Heroes of Handheld, the podcast dedicated to handheld gaming. We like to talk about everything Vita, 3DS, Nintendo Switch, iOS, Android, anything that you play with your thumbs and your fingers and has a screen and you can touch it, then we're probably going to cover it, which pretty much covers every single console known to man. I'm a bit annoyed this week, Chris, and I'll tell you what. Hi, Chris. I'm Colin. I'm Hi. the new host, and that's Chris. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? How's London? Hi, How's London treating you? Is it nice? All right. Yes, yeah, okay. You're right. Good, good. He's back from his giraffe feeding exploits last week at the Capital Zoo. Um, obviously, he had to keep it on the down low that he was going there because otherwise he would be mobbed by all our fans and they would have had to have closed the whole zoo. So it's a good thing that he didn't tell anyone um, until he got there. Um, before we move on to gaming news and why I'm annoyed. So Chris, it was Chris's birthday last week. Happy birthday, Chris, by the Thank way. Thank you. Um, Chris got to do something very exciting and I've already ruined what it was but I'm going to let Chris explain what he did at the zoo um, in so, more detail yeah uh, Emma pay, Emma sorted it all out she you have to, I mean you, you have to pay it's not free obviously uh, for me and her to go to London Zoo and to feed the hand feed the giraffes Colin you mm. go off on this massive platform you're about 16 foot in the sky you've got a Bucket of carrot and broccoli. You hold them out. The giraffes come over and they go, yum, 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 yum. Thank you very much. It was so tight. It was so blooming good. Just sat there, like, wrapping, they wrap their tongues around the carrot. Yeah, and you're like, say, yeah, what's up? Help yourself, mate. A little bit of broccoli. Don't mind if I do. They were so, like, so sweet and docile. It was great. It was really good. Giraffes are just lovely, aren't they? I don't think there's anyone yeah, out there who so doesn't love wonderful. a giraffe. When I went to Disney a couple of months ago, in the Animal Kingdom park, they had the safari, which is obviously uh -huh. like a, a Disney-made safari, obviously. Um, and they had loads of giraffes in there. And they were just fascinating to watch. Like, there's little baby ones and the adult ones. And they were just wandering about, eating trees and eating leaves. And they're just, just so innocent, just so gentle. Like, But, I mean, in terms of feeding them, Chris, I, I can't help but imagine it being quite moist with their tongue. Because um, they no, like to... It was, it was like a... They had these, so their tongues are about 18 inches long. Is it like when your mum kisses you before you go to bed? No, uh, it's like when your mum sucks my dick because they have <laughs> these, they use their tongue as like, know, Jeez. They, they use their tongue to like wrap around what you're feeding them, right. which is why I compared it to your mother and oral fellatio because <laughs> she kind of wraps, they just wrap it around and then use that to like bring it into their mouths. Nice. Brilliant. Which, as we all know, is Mama Bird's finishing move. <laughs> Amazing. Um, but yeah, it was actually, it looked quite cool. Um, not the, it, was, it took me by surprise when I saw the pictures, but it looked really fun. So you're very lucky. But uh, you can actually feed, I'd, really... I'd like to feed the ant, the feed the ant eaters, because surely you just get a bucket of ants and throw it in and then they're happy. And then it'd be uh, fun. What else? Could, I think you could do penguins. Yeah. And camels. Oh, camels would be camels are like uh, the giraffes, like younger brother. They're like the same zeb, sort of ilk. Maybe like zebras or antelopes, something like that. Mm. Well, she can't feed uh, the lions or anything because that might be bad. No, no, or the tigers because you know yeah. your dangerous. face, your face is coming off of your face. You're getting mauled. Anyway, but, uh, no, it's lovely. Thank you for asking. Sounds like you had a lovely time. Anyway, why I'm annoyed this week. So I've got loads of old PS1 uh, accessories and games and the console from when I was a wee nipper. I used to love my PS1, played it constantly, loved it. And I noticed recently, well, not recently, uh, quite a while this has been going on, but in the Computer Exchange, or CEX, to all you British listeners out there, um, which is a shop where you can take your old gaming goods and they'll give you cash or install credit for it. Um, and I have a load of PS1 stuff, and I looked at the prices online, and I've got, I don't suppose you remember a game called Point Blank on uh, Yes, with, with, um, with Dr. Dan and Dr. Dr. Dom, is it? It was, it was something like that. They did have similar names, didn't they? They're like brothers because one was like quite small yeah. and chubby at the moustache, and the other one was had like a long head. 
uh, and they were all. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a light gun game that uh, with with different levels. Yes, I do remember Point Blank. Yes. Great shout. I had Point Blank Two on my PS One, and obviously to play that you had to have the Namco gun. I think it's called the Gun Pro One or something like that. Um, and I was like, oh, I'll see how much this will get me. You know, sure, this will get me a couple of quid because you know it's a it's a cool looking gun. And it's a accessory from a bygone gaming era. No, if I traded that gun in, I'd get one pound twenty in cash. Wow! Yeah, if you trade in the Dual Shock for the PS One, you get twenty p. Twenty p. Disgraceful. That's mad. I know. I have to get some. You more could probably sell it on that. eBay for more than that, can you? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Like they, you get more money if you do in-store credit, but then it all comes down to how much they sell it for. And I think they sell the gun for about five or anyway, so or six quid or something. But um, yeah, that's really annoying. Um, I'm actually uh, going. To, I didn't realize. I'm looking through my drawers the other day at the games I've got, and I've actually got. Do you remember Borderlands Two on PlayStation Vita? Remember when I picked this up yes. and played it for a bit? I've still got that for some reason. I don't really know why. So I'm going to trade that in. I can, you, they still give you seven quid for trading in Borderlands 2. That's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Game. Anyway, uh, moving on, moving swiftly on. What are we going to talk about? So we're talking about Vita. I mean, what's going on in the world this week, Chris? You, you've been telling me that you've been playing a lot of a paint-based shooter. I've been playing so much Splatoon because obviously, because I've been off work for almost a week now. Uh, and there's been the salmon runs open, and they've released a, a new. They've released right this uh, this amazing new weapon called the Splatbrella, <laughs> nice. Which they kind of like a shot. It's a, basically like a shotgun in terms of range, but if you fire and hold down the button, uh, it, you get like an umbrella shield comes up out the front. This looks cool. I'm looking and at you pictures. can launch the umbrella mm. shield off, and it's like. It's just such an amazing game. And when the internet's working well, it's just so satisfying to go on and play a bunch of rallies with uh, like Sam and Ron friends online and try and work on your rank. It's amazing. And I've just started playing ranked play online, which is a whole new kettle of fish because I was playing casual where people kind of don't mind that much. And then ranked is like so much more strategic. You yeah. get these really like intricate teams and there's a real kind of vibe about like, people doing things in like a set way i guess do you know what i mean yeah yeah so like you if you if you're playing casual and you've got four people with roll with splat rollers uh you 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 know you, you're gonna lose but you're gonna have a good time like it's gonna be fun whereas in ranked you just have to hope you've got a good balance of weapons on your team because it makes such a difference yeah hmm. and there's even like there's a league mode as well which i'm not even good enough for yet but that's my next step is try and climb up the tables for that yeah oh Oh, cool. I mean, you keep picking it up, and I do really want to play it. It seems like a really fun and great addictive game, especially now that you can take it on the go because of the whole uh, you know, handheld side of the Nintendo Switch. Do you play it on the go? Do you play it out and about if you have Wi-Fi? Yeah. Uh, I have done a bit. I mean, it's a bit of a faff. Like, I'd rather play it at home. But I have played it on, like, you know, like Starbucks Wi-Fi or whatever. Yeah. Oh, but the thing is, you dodge. have to kind of assume their internet is good enough to, you know, keep up. Yeah, I remember when we did an episode of this podcast when you were sat in Acosta. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. that was great vibes. Wasn't it? People really loved great. it. Really great. Talking of team-based shooters, so, you know, Call of Duty, you love it, you hate it. It's been going for a long time. Every year we get one. Uh, and this one, they're going back to their roots, and we've got Call of Duty World War II coming out this November. And a new trailer dropped. Uh, I think this was yesterday, actually. I mean, I checked it out. And it's got, I was excited for this anyway, but I'm even more excited now. Uh, they released a trailer for to promote the multiplayer beta trailer uh sorry the multiplayer is it beta or beta i do, we yeah. never decided on this beta. as it rhymes with vita yes the beta vita beta great episode great episode uh, anyway so they have uh, given a trailer for the private multiplayer beta and this is coming out very soon so basically if you've pre-ordered call of duty world war 2 you will get a code and you'll be able to access this um, early access beta and depending on what uh, console you've got and whereabouts you live will depend uh, when you can access this so if you have a ps4 and you've pre-ordered call of duty world war 2 uh, the start time for that is the 25th of August, which is, what's it now, the 16th? So it's uh, about nine days' time, so over a week. Uh, this starts on the 25th of August at 10 a.m. PST. What's, what's PST stand for? 
uh, Pacific Standard Time. Yeah, that's the one. And 6 p.m. UK time, and you'll end on the 28th. So it's three days of World War II madness and craziness, uh, and you'll end at the same times uh, three days later. So 10 a.m. in the morning, PST, and 6 p.m. UK time. Um, for Xbox One, um, it will start on the 1st of September. Apparently, so it's quite October. Oh, no, September's the month after August, isn't it? Yeah. That's a bit stupid. Of course it is. So yeah. uh, uh, if you have an Xbox One, obviously we know that Sony and PlayStation have an exclusivity deal with, um, is it Infinity Ward they have that with? I think they're still the company. Or is it Activision? It must be Activision, isn't it? Um, where the content comes to PS4 first for releasing on other consoles. If you've got an Xbox One, you can access the beta on the 1st of September, 10 a.m. PST, 6 p.m. UK time, and it will end on the 4th. So three days again. So from the 1st to the 4th of September. And the trailer looks really cool. I mean, it's your standard Call of Duty fair, but it's in the World War II setting, and the graphics look really nice. So I'm just excited. You know, in the past, I've been excited by these newer Call of Duty games and I've been let down. Uh, I think the biggest example of being let down was probably Black Ops 3, which was really disappointing in my opinion. Uh, but I did like Infinite... Was it Infinite Warfare? Was it? No, it was Advanced Warfare from about three years ago. That was actually a really good game where they introduced the jump jets on your back. So you could like double jump everywhere. That was actually a really good one. Anyway, uh, so they released some more details about what's going to be included in this beach as well. Um, there's going to be three maps available, and they're called Point du Hoc, Ardennes, and Gibraltar. And the modes that'll be available is the war game mode. Now, war is something that actually hasn't been in Call of Duty for a while, and it was back in the um, World at War game, which came out after Call of Duty 4. I think what war was, wasn't it where like you had to take over areas of the map and it was massive team game and it was like you had to... Yeah, that sounds yeah, much about it. But, um, it, kind of territory what, control. Yeah, that was what it was. So that's coming back, which I'm excited for. I really like that one when I played World at War. Uh, team Deathmatch, obviously, will be in there. Domination, which is the old favorite, and Hardpoint, which I really liked Hardpoint when that was introduced. Um, and there'll be a few other things as well. But you can also get a reward as well. So playing the beta will give you access to the beta combat pack, which includes a unique helmet, calling card, and emblem for the full release in November. So I, I don't know whether they've taken this out of recent Call of Duty. I, I will admit I've not played Call of Duty for a couple of years. Um, but they, I remember back in, I think it was introduced back with the Black Ops 1 or maybe one of the um, later releases where they had calling cards and emblems that you could put next to your name. So it would come up on the screen when you killed someone or when you did something, it would come up on the top right hand of the screen and everyone would see it. I used to really like that because you could like uh, make them funny ones and you could put flags on there's one that had naked ladies on it was is it is it proper proper fun uh so that's going to be available from the 25th of august for ps4 owners and the 1st of september for xbox one owners so if you're excited for call of duty world war ii if you pre-ordered it get more excited watch the trailer because you'll be able to access online a few days uh well um but for everyone else basically but hopefully they've got the servers all um, running correctly because i think there's been um, instances in the past where they've had these um private beaters and people just haven't been able to play i think was it the battlefield one when it was battlefield one where they had like well, that's part part of why they have beta tests isn't it to test yeah. the server load but i remember like when they had this um they had that private beta beta I keep saying it wrong. Uh, private beta for World uh, for Battlefield One. I swear there was problems where people couldn't even log in straight away. It crashed. So yeah, hopefully it's a lot better and they're more prepared. I'm sure they will be. So that's very exciting. Anyway, I just wanted to talk about that because I think Call of Duty looks really cool this year. And also, just want to quickly mention Sonic Mania, which has finally released. Now, I am a massive fan of the old Sonic games. I played them a lot when I was very young. It's probably my one of my first introductions into gaming. Actually, playing the original Sonic games, so one, two, and three. Who can forget Sonic 3, where you had that little extra um, cartridge you could stick on top? So it was like a massive double cartridge oh, coming out of your console. Knuckles. Yes, and you got Knuckles, and that was a really great game. So um, Sonic Mania, obviously, is a callback to Sonic games of old, where it's, it has um, um, elements from all the previous Sonic titles, bonus levels, maps, but they've revamped them to make them look a bit prettier. They've added a few extra features, and they've added a few extra levels as well. But it looks really great. I'm really happy to see that reviews are actually really good for this um which i'm not surprised because i mean the sonic games have had a lot of issues over recent years i remember back when the first or one of the first um 
or the next gen, there's no old gen, Sonic games came out for the Xbox 360. It was just called Sonic the Hedgehog, and that's being listed as one of the worst games of all time on the Xbox 360, whereas for the bugs, it didn't make any sense. Sonic, for some reason, was bonking a princess, which was very strange because he's a hedgehog. Very odd. Um, the, one, uh, the one that I quite liked was Sonic Generations. Yes. They, yeah, like you say, they have been fairly ropey. Like, it's been rare for a Sonic game to get to but average that, it more than like six and a half, seven out of ten. But that was a, I remember Sonic Generations because I had that one as well. And that was actually a great game. But the reason why that did so well and was reviewed better was because it went back to the old way of doing things. So it was still 3D, but it's a 2T, 2D gameplay. Where like even though like you're looking over the shoulder and you see the map in front of you, it was just you're running forward and you have to jump over obstacles and things like that, and which is what people love. Sonic, wasn't it? Because fat old Sonic and man yes. new hit Sonic, and they like you had to. I think they were teaming up together, or so yeah. This new one looks like it's reviewing really well. And on the Switch store, hmm. it's uh, if you go into the Nintendo Switch e store at the moment, it's the number one in terms of hot right now, or whatever Good. they call that category. That makes me happy. So, I mean, it's, sell- it's clearly selling really well. Now, I really want to get this game, but I want to wait till I get a Switch, because I think it'll be nice to play on Switch on a handheld um, device. So I'll probably have to wait, unfortunately. Um, but anyway, going um, further on in terms of the Nintendo Switch version, so it's been pretty much all smooth sailing for this game in terms of reviews and how it's working. It's playing magnificently on Nintendo Switch. People are saying the controls are great. It runs really smoothly. It's just a perfect game. But some people have noticed some weird glitches that are happening when you play the game. And it's nothing to do with the game play itself. So the game still plays fine. But apparently, according to multiple different people on Twitter and things like that, um, when you play Sonic Mania on your Switch, the capture button, the home button, and power buttons on the system either fail to respond at all or are very slow to respond. Um, It seems to only affect the Switch version um, because they're the only consoles that have those buttons. Um, But it's not happening for every user, and it's intermittent even when it does happen. So it's a bit strange that more than one person has noticed this. Well, the game still um, works fine, but... If you want to get a screenshot, you can't because it won't let you. And there's a video here which was um, put on Twitter from uh, someone called at Ibsters, Sir Digby Chicken, which is a great name. Sir Digby uh, Chicken, Caesar. Great. Uh, yes. Um, they said, um, I can't take it that they put, um, um, dot, dot, dot. I can't take a screenshot or go back to the Switch dashboard when playing Sonic Mania you're in handheld mode. And they uh, uh, tagged Sega Europe and Go Nintendo tweets. So it's very strange. Um but I mean, but it's so that would be something that like that would be something the team will fix probably. Easy, yeah. I'm, like, that's not going to be tricky, is it? I mean, the main thing is that the game actually works well. I mean, I'm sure people will will survive not ha- not being able to screenshot in the game. I, I, I don't think that'll be a major issue. But I'm just glad it's reviewing well and it's making people go back and feel nostalgia and realize why Sonic was so great back in its heyday. So, yeah, are you going to be picking this up, Chris? Uh, I might. You're never a big fan. I don't, to be honest, I really struggle with Sonic games. Like they're yeah. too fast for me. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. I will. I might at some point, but you know, probably not. <laughs> Great. How yeah, much? To be, to be honest, I've got so many other things to play. Nice platoon. Um, how much is it on the store? The Sonic. Uh, the uh, uh, Switch store. Do you know? I've, I've not, not got my Switch to hand. I think it's about twenty quid. No, that's not too bad. That's all right. Uh, anyway, tell me about Super Quest. What's this? So uh, I've been playing a game called We've, We sometimes review apps from the App Store here on this here podcast. And I've been playing a, an RPG called Super Quest, which is the USP here, Colin, which I really appreciate, is the fact you can play it one-handed. Right. So it's got this really simple UI um, where you uh, kind of... You do everything with one hand. It's quite it's quite simple to control. There's not loads of layers of like inventory or armor or whatever. And I just wanted to recommend it to people because I've I really struggled to find games I want to play on my phone. And I especially struggle because they either seem to be really cut co- like really overly complicated, um, or they seem to be like obsessed with trying to get you to buy things as soon as possible. Yeah. Super Quest is free. Uh, if there are in-app purchases. I've not hit them yet. They, I mean, there must be some, but I've just not hit them. Uh, but it's a really, like, it's just a really simple but fun game to play. Uh, you, it's like a top-down view for exploring the map, which you do with one hand because it's all in a column. And then uh, later on, you go into battles with people, and you kind of go through dungeons. 
it's really simple combat mechanics you can upgrade your strength and attack and weapons but it's like simply tap to attack and you recover health over time so you can just have like a session then leave yourself to recover then come back i just wanted to point people towards it because i think it's a really good game there are some issues with um i think whoever created it maybe english isn't their first language because there's a couple right. of instructions that are a bit hard to follow hmm. but overall it's really really top tier game i'd really recommend uh like give it a shot because it like I say it's free well, and, it available on? where can you play uh, i'm playing it on ios it right. might be on android as well i'm not sure hmm. yeah but cool. yeah re uh, recommend it nice after you check that out um sounds interesting i'm always I, I feel like i just don't utilize my phone enough in terms of apps and things like that so i'm always looking for new things now so i will definitely check that out is it super quest all one word or is it two words yeah, all um, one word. we well, put a link on here it's fanhunt.wordpress.com as well marvelous marvelous right so uh talking of playing games on the phone i've been playing a game on my phone i just want to very quickly mention this because i saw it on the um a game section of the iOS App Store and is recommended. Very good reviews. A puzzle game called Warp Shift, which I'm um, I hadn't um, heard of before. I saw it recommended on uh, the store. It's a really fun little puzzle game. The um, graphics are gorgeous in it. It's 3D graphics where basically you're a young um, girl. I don't know if you're a princess or something. It's not really explained. There's no talking in it. Where uh, she's thrown into this weird dimension where there's a massive tower and she has to make her way up this tower to presumably, presumably escape. And um, you escape by having to solve these very, well, not basic, but these puzzles. And how it works is you're in a box and each box has an exit and an entrance. There's like it, the entrance will be at the top of the box or at the bottom left or right. And there can be up to, well, loads of boxes in this, um, in the game in each level and you've got to rearrange the boxes so in the least moves possible you get to the exit so in one of the boxes will be like a little warp pad thing where you exit the level and you've got to re move the boxes so when you tap that warp pad um your character will go all the way through going through all these gaps and doorways straight to the warp pad from the beginning um, it's hard to explain, sort of hard to explain, but it is a really fun game, actually, and it really is challenging. You get ranked out of three each level. Um, the less moves you use, the more points you get and the more stars you get. So if you think you've been really clever and you've got a good route and you end up getting into the warp pad, but then you only get one star, you know that you can do it in um, fewer moves. So it's um, really cool, actually. You have to really think about it, and it's it makes you know straight away by how many stars you get whether you are um you know doing it right or not yeah but no, it's really fun it's a great game it's called warp shift i definitely recommend it it's free to download um it looks great and yeah it's just a lot of fun if you like your puzzle games uh definitely check it out because it's a really cool um unique look and spin on it right okay that's the app reviews done for this week that's uh apple bap done 100 problems but an app ain't one mm. done who anyway right let's move on i want to hear some news so let's talk about uh tell me about nintendo switch being back in at gamestop so this is only a well to be honest colin this yeah. is one of those stories that we're a little late on because yet the day before yesterday gamestop said uh, gamestop obviously a big uh, games chain in america uh, we don't have it over here uh, i think there's a website over here but there's not another thing over here anyway gamestop have said um Good news, uh, we're bringing the Switch back in stock. Every Sw every GameStop store is going to get at least five, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but across every GameStop in the US, that's pretty big. Uh, and since that was the day before yesterday, they actually got put in stock yesterday, which was the 15th. I don't know if they're still in stock, but I just thought we should mention it because if you're in, a, in the States and you're looking for a Switch, uh, this might have passed you by, but GameStop sound like they should have them rare they're ready for you so uh go and have a little look and uh, they've done a quite a clever thing where online um they are selling they're not selling just the switch they're only selling the quite big bundles because the idea is obviously people who are going to shimmy these things on are going to want to look online as the first port of call so yeah. they've made that a little bit more tricky for scalpers which i really appreciate so yeah, uh, GameStop have their Switch, Sam Switch is back in stock. But on a similar note, you put this in the article, Colin. Yeah. In Japan, there's a pic pictures from Kotaku where 105 Switches got released to a shop and more than 3,000 people are here a picture queuing for it, which yeah. is 
crazy so you line up to get raffle numbers um and then they drew the raffle out of a bag and people who whose numbers came up got the chance to to buy one so it wasn't like a first come first serve system but three thousand people and this explains why three thousand people turned up when there was only 150 um no 105 because like they all had a chance with this raffle which does make more sense and this but uh this website called to Tukadane, which is uh, which where Kotaku got their information from, uh, they sent a report to 48 shops in Tokyo to try and walk in and buy a switch, and none, none out of 48. So we think we have stock problems over here, but in Japan it's still horrendous. Yeah, I think I, we had an article a few months ago where it was because they were struggling to get like parts for the um, uh, the uh, what's it called to the the screen. What's it called? Isn't it? No, it wasn't the screens. It was in something like the chip or something inside it that programs it or something like that, which is why there's been shortages of stock. But yeah, it's some huge in them uh, in Japan. And there was one interview on that article where a grandfather's been like trying like every single day. He gets up early and goes to all these shops to try and get a switch for his granddaughter, uh, but he just can't get one anywhere. So yeah, I thought it was a. Uh, quite interesting it made me think of the film jingle all the way which is one of my favorite christmas films where he's trying to find a turbo man doll and he has to go to a shop to get one and they've got one left and he has to like be drawn into this raffle to get it but they double the price of the turbo man as well because you know everyone wants it and then they throw the balls in the air which the balls are like part of the raffle and it's a funny scene where they all dive and punch each other to try and get these balls it's very fun um another little bit of switch news which is just uh, kind of it's more a recommendation than anything else. Uh, a website called GamingBolt.com. Love it. Put together an analysis here. Have you seen this, Colin? I have not. Where the Switch will have this is their headline: the Switch will have more exclusives in nine months than the Xbox One has had in all of 2016 and 2017 put together. That's not hard. It's not difficult to have more than zero. So in 2016-2017, the Xbox One uh, has nine exclusive titles. Uh, Forza Horizon 3, Gears War 4, Quantum Break, ReCore, Dead Rising 4, Halo Wars 2, Crackdown 3, Super's Lucky Tale, and Forza Motorsport 7. And the Switch already has uh, either announced or released more titles than that that are exclusive. Uh, Breath of the Wild, 1-2 Switch, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Arms, Splatoon 2, Mario X Rabbids, Kingdom Battle, Pokémon Tournament DX, uh, Super Mario Odyssey, Fire Emblem Warriors, and Zelda Blade Chronicles 2. And the article points out that uh, some of those Switch games are available on the Wii U, that's true, but all of the uh, Xbox games are available on the PC. So that is, but that is a bonkers statistic to me, and it shows how great Nintendo are for exclusives, but it also shows how rubbish Microsoft are for it. We all knew this already. It's old news. We know we don't get any exclusives, but at least I got Gears of War 4 to cuddle and cradle whilst I cry at night. Love you, Marcus. Love you, Marcus. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, that is interesting. So what have they cited? Any games that um, what are they referring to when they say they've got loads of exclusives coming? Well, uh, I've just read you the list, Colin. Uh, I didn't I didn't hear you. Please read this that's list right. again. I'll, I'll read it again because I know my connection can be a bit ropey. Uh, so you've got Breath of the Wild, 1, 2, Switch, oh, yeah. Mario Kart, and Oh, Deluxe. you did. You did read that list. And that's a lovely list, Chris. It's very, very nice. Very good. And, and they're all, they're all really well-received games as well. Yeah, well, all, most Nintendo exclusive are. So there you go. Great strike, Craig. It's good. It's good. Right, I'm going to bring you some Vita news, and I'm going to start with the the biggest news, the greatest news. We've got a picture here of loads of uh, young anime girls with their boobs and legs out. You know it's going to be good because we've got Tuhu Sky Arena coming to PlayStation Vita on September the 14th in Japan. So for those of you who don't know, it's a 3D arena fighter by Area Zero, uh, and it released on PS4 back in May 2016, but it's now coming to Vita in September, and this is according to mediascape in japan um apparently it's basically like magical battle arena an earlier game by the same circle and it originally released in march 2011 on pc so five six years ago crazy the new and updated version is part of the play doujin project that brings various doujin titles to playstation now i think doujin isn't that a um genre of game that's that um are targeted towards girls i'm just gonna double check this doujin let's have a look uh, 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 do you have any term of Google people friends who should? Oh, no, it's not. No, I'm completely wrong. So, Dujim 
is a general Japanese term for a group of people or friends who share an interest, activity, hobby, or achievement. The word is sometimes translated into English as uh, click, fandom, cotier, society, or circle, e.g. a sewing circle. The more you know, Great. the more you know. Uh, the Vita version of the Arena Fighter features over 20 playable characters and 70 tracks, and also have the D DLC version from the PS4 version, which is cool as well. Uh, and there'll be an ad hoc mode exclusive to the Vita version, and you can enjoy the game in various single player modes or take on other players online on PlayStation Network. And there's a there's no trailer, but there's loads of images, so yeah, you probably know what it looks like. It's very colorful, and there's loads of, loads of young girls in it, and it's coming out to Japan September 14th. Only in Japan, no Western release yet, but one day we can dream. We might get it. Sorry. Moving on to more exciting news, Chris. So a game that I've been... Lol, lol, lol. So this is a game I've been talking about for years, and I'm actually very, very excited about this news. Very, I can't actually explain how... I'm sort of relieved as well. So a couple of years ago, um, I think it was 20... Yeah, 2014 now. God, it's quite a while ago. Three years ago. Um, the game Papers, Please, which was a very interesting game where you are part of the border control of this fictional country in Europe, and you have to decide whether you let people into your country or you refuse them. Um, you look at their passport, they give you like their reasons why they should be allowed in, these immigrants, and you have to decide whether they, you let them in or you send them back to their home country, and all your decisions affect how the game plays out. So there's no overall story, and you hear news about things that are happening if you on the decisions you make. So it's a really interesting concept, really well reviewed across the board. Um, so this is supposed to be coming out to Vita. It's all gone very, very quiet. We've mentioned it every now and then, where the developer and the guy who makes it I said, no, it's still coming, but then we just heard nothing. So people assumed it was dead, it was buried, and that was the end of it. But no, some news has surfaced this week, and it's got us all very excited again. Because apparently, yesterday was exactly three years since um, 3909 LLC, which is the company who developed it, that uh, it's been three years since they announced it was coming to Vita at Gamescom 2014. Um, but... But yesterday, the Australian Classification Board rated the game for PlayStation Vita. And this suggests that it's a release is finally coming. So when a game is rated, that means that the release date is not far behind. This is always the case with games, and most of the time, uh, this means the game is coming. So this is very exciting, because if it's been classified in Australia, that means it must be coming out to Vita soon, and hopefully this means it'll be coming out to Europe as well, so I can play it. Um, and it's just very exciting. That's, th that's the news, and there's a big article here about um, you know what the game is and things like that. But no. When this game comes out, I will definitely be checking it out because I've been wanting to play it for ages, but I've sort of held off and held off getting it on Steam because I just really want to play it on Vita. It seems like a game that would be perfect fit on there. I just hope it's a... I mean, it doesn't look like a huge game in terms of its gra graphics and um, things like that, so hopefully it will play well. But, yeah, we'll keep you posted on whether we get a release date, but it looks like it's just around the corner because it's been rated in Australia. Very, very exciting. Very exciting, Chris. Keen. You keen? Yeah. Uh, do you want a little bit of a little bit of 3DS news? Do it. Fill me up. Are you, are you full? Have you had your assault Android cactus news? No, I've not read that yet. Well, that's the Vita news. So whilst you're looking at that, uh, I know, gonna... I know. But why don't you give me some 3DS news before I talk I know, about it? No, I know, that. I know. Uh, the first, the first thing, Colin, mm -hmm. is that finally uh, in the UK you can now download a little tool called Smile Basic. Uh, it comes out tomorrow, actually, on 3DS in uh, in the UK. I think it's already out in America and Japan. And this is just this is interesting because it's a coding tool. The teacher you had to code on a thing called Smile, right? Uh, which I don't know. I know I think called Basic. Sorry, Basic is the coding platform. Uh, I don't know too much about it, but we'll have some people listening who are like mad keen for this. And obviously, there's a real push at the moment to get kids into coding. Uh, I don't know if you're kind of across this, but schools and stuff are paying to have coding lessons and things. Lucky. So this should be a really good, uh, really good tool for them. There's local multiplayer, apparently. I don't know how that works. You might, really you might have explained this, but I've Googled Smart Basic, and it's come up with something called Petite Computer. Um, yeah, I, th I think they're probably related. It's to do with programming, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Petit Computer is a software development application for Nintendo DSi and later DS systems. So yeah, this must be just be the updated version. Huh, interesting. 
uh yeah it's, uh, so yeah that's uh, that comes out tomorrow in the uk on 3ds uh your next little bit of news column yes very very briefly some, there's not loads of 3ds happening in the moment but monster hunter stories uh the, there is now a demo out on the eShop. i had an email about it the other day uh the game comes out september the 8th and there's a website as well the monster hunter stories .com, which looks it makes it look really pretty i'm kind of um i was really keen for this game but now I've got a, it's really bad, but now I've got a Switch. I'm like, something's going to have to be really good to get me back playing onto the 3DS. Yeah. Uh, this, I mean, it looks good, but I don't know if it's the one. It's not the one. Um, but, you know, that's okay. Yokai Watch Busters 2 announced, uh, and there's also Yokai Watch 3 version 4.0 coming as well. Level 5 did a couple of announcements. Um, it comes so Yoko Watch 3 version 4.0 is going to be available at the end of the month on August 30th. Um, I'm not sure when Yoko Watch Busters 2 He Who Denetsu Barbanari Aria comes out, but it's a sequel to Yoko Watch Busters Aka Neko Dan Shiro when you tie. Uh, I don't really, I don't really know, but there's some trailers if you're keen. Uh, perfectly Nintendo have done a really good watch up about it. Comes out, oh, it comes out in the winter in Japan, apparently. So uh, that's all we know this winter, and presumably it'll come out in the West because Yoko Watch is a big franchise. And finally, for the 3DS, Etrian Odyssey 5. Now, Etrian Odyssey is one of those games that I don't really play, but uh, when we mention it in our podcast, the fans are keen, Colin. They love, the, they love this title. They love these games. They're always um, asking for it. They really are. Etrian Odyssey 5, uh, Beyond the Myth, comes out on the 3DS, Germs in North America, October 17th, and it comes out in Europe later on in the winter. Deep Silver reporting that. There's a new trailer which plays, introduces a new class called The Fencer, which looks dope. Uh, we'll embed that here at fanhub.wordpress.com. You can read all about it there. Read all about it. Read all about it. Oh, 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 oh. Who sings that song? Is it end, end ups? No. Oh no! And oh, who about it? Major who? I can't remember. All about it. Read all. It is Emily Sande. Oh yeah, proper who? Proper who? Anyway, I've got one more bit of news to talk to you about, and it's uh, we're ending on a bit of a sad note. Unfortunately, these are becoming far too frequent. Where games that are promised for PlayStation Vita are cancelled, or in this case, stalled. So this time it's Assault Android Cactus. Not going to lie, I didn't know much about this one, but uh, developer Witchbeam have revealed in a tweet that development of the Vita version of the game has stalled and work is unlikely to continue at this point. Um, asked if players who bought um, bought the game on PS4 due to the cross-buy promise. So apparently this came out on PS4, and then developer promised it would come out to Vita as well, cross-buy. Uh, apparently they will get their money back, and which being replied, we're not happy with this outcome either. Although I'm sorry to hear you have derived so little value from the game we have released. Ooh, that's a bit, that's a bit mean. It's a bit cold, isn't it? So someone's demanded that... Yeah, people want their money back because they, well, they're saying they just want the Vita version. They're saying, oh, well, you got the PS4 version. Surely that's enough. Well, what do you want from us? But, Colin, hmm. every PS4 game is a PS Vita game thanks to Stream 4 Play, whatever it's called. Remote Play. Yeah. Or PS Now. Yes, um, it released for PS4 back in March 2016, so a long time ago now, well over a year. Um, and it lost out in the most recent PlayStation Plus vote to play, which is where the fans, the players, can decide what goes on Plus. Uh, a month later, which Beam admitted that they didn't have high expectations for the Vita version from a financial standpoint, but added that it's also super important that we do what we said we'd do. So they've gone back on that, and basically they're not bringing it to Vita. I mean, they won't say it's cancelled, but this all came from a tweet, actually, that um, uh, they sent out three days ago, 13th, uh, where someone replied saying, hi, is the game still coming to Vita? And the official Twitter account replied, unfortunately, development stalled and is unlikely to resume at this point. We're not happy about this, but we'll, on we'll announce if anything changes. I just think it's a bit bad that they don't really give any reason. You know, they've just said it's stalled and it's unlikely to continue. Yeah, it. it's stalled, move on. Yeah, it's just 
It annoys me where these game developers just think, oh, they can not bring it to Vita, just brush it under the carpet and no one will notice. And as soon as someone picks on it, they get all really defensive and like sort of like sassy. Um, I mean, recent games that have been cancelled, obviously we did a, we spoke about the Banner Saga, which um, was cancelled after coming back to life and being killed again. Uh, Chroma Squad and Hyperlight Drifter, all games that were supposed to be coming to Vita but were cancelled, and all games I spoke about on IndieCast all those years ago, so very sad. So if you're looking forward to Assault Android Cactus, unfortunately, you ain't going to get it. You ain't going to get it, which is very sad. Now, last thing I want to talk about, actually, is the fact that after mocking me, uh, making jokes behind my back, pointing at me and laughing and uh, writing notes about me and writing mean things about me on the toilet doors at school and on the lockers. Um, Chris has gone and purchased himself or has someone That's, purchased for him. Yeah, that, someone has purchased for me a fidget spinner. Chris, if you pl so, feel please. Oh, hang on, I'll put the camera back on, shall I? Yes, you, you probably should this at this point. Uh, here you go. Woo! Now, when you started playing with your fidget spinner during the podcast a couple of weeks ago, I was like, what's he doing? But it's so addictive. Like, I can I get you. why everyone's mm. buying them. I told you, it's very addictive and it's very satisfying. And the noise it makes is just so... It's just great. It's just a lovely noise. It's that little whooshing noise. It's good. And it's just really, it's just relaxing. It's just so relaxing. Which what have you got? Have you got like a themed one, or have you just got a basic one? No, nah, basic blue, mate. Basic blue. Yeah, I've got red. It seems like we could never decide on anything. Like, I agree on anything because we were different teams on PlayStation, um, Pokemon Go as well. I was the blues. You were the reds, mm. weren't you? What were the yellows? Um, so the complete pop. I was yellow. I still am uh, yellow. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Yellow. Hey, did you uh, see Mewtwo's coming to Pokemon Go? Yes, I saw that. And actually, today on my lunch break, um, where I sit on my break, I go into the gardens uh, where I sit. There's a lovely little um, grassy area. And there's a gym right in the center. And today, there were, I can't remember the name of the Pokemon. It was like Versofio or something. It was one of the rare Pokemon. And I was in this battle with two other randomers. I was, you know, when you like randomers are uh, battling with you in raid mode, and you're looking around trying to see if you can spot them. I could yeah, yeah. spot anyone. It was weird. Like, anyway, so three of us went into this game and this raid. Um, and honestly, we probably like chipped away about an eighth of its life. It was ridiculous how strong it was. Like, I, I had to run at the end. I'd already lost like four of my Pokemon. I barely had any revives left anyway. So I just did the runner and left them to it. I'm out of there. Screw that. Look at that. It's so hard. It's so difficult to beat these rare Pokemon. It's ridiculous. Yeah, with the legendaries, there's really no point unless there's a load of you. Yeah, I know. There's only three of us. You probably need loads more than that. But um, it was still fun to try. Um, still enjoying Pokemon. Yeah, oh, Go. yeah, still yeah, yeah. Still playing it, so that's good. Um, yeah, so I'm still playing Pokemon Go. I, I sort of forget I'm playing it now. That's why I don't really talk about it on the podcast. It's just like something I open up every day and like get the um the xp i've actually recently leveled up to 27 i know i'm well behind everyone else still but that was good for me i was happy about that fine on level 27 um chris yo what else do you have to say for yourself? oh i saw last thing in clinton's you know they have the Simpsons that we love so much yeah they had all the star wars ones for 99p <gasps> did you Darth, get them i didn't because they're horrendous darth maul jar jar binks uh all those what i did one i wanted star lord but i couldn't find him anywhere that's one i'm uh, really wanting for my collection yeah i've um the i don't know what's happening with some terms because the sainsbury's near us the big one is selling off a load of their like symptoms accessories uh, like half price i don't know if there's like a new maybe disney are kind of shaking it up or something Maybe they're going to release loads, I've more. noticed loads of Simpsons stock on sale. Yeah, I mean, that's not a new thing, actually. I've seen stock on sale in um, Asda as well, actually. It's weird. They don't seem to actually sell the proper Simpsons, but they sell all the accessories. The Clintons mm. must have like some exclusivity deal with the actual Simpsons. It's very odd, very strange. I wonder how much money we paid. But I'm looking forward to the Emperor's New Groove Simpsons, which are coming out oh, soon. Is that next? That's cool. Uh, yeah, they were they were um, or teased a couple of months ago. So I don't normally the Americans get it first, and then we get it a few months after. I mean, I got Wally and Eva from obviously Wally over here to my right um, in America when I was in Disney World. Um, but they're actually out in the UK now. I've seen them in all the Clintons. So we do get them eventually. So I'm looking forward to How getting How else are you in Clintons? Huh? 
I do go in there quite a lot. I do, I do go in Clinton's quite a lot. I'm not going to lie. It's right down the road from where I work. So I, I literally just like pop in there in every lunch break just to see what the latest offers are. They must think I'm really weird. Cause I, like, I'm, I don't know whether it's you think it's weird if you've ever done this, but I walk into Clinton's and look at the Simpsons and I just hope that people aren't judging me because I'm like a 25 year old male looking at all these like Simpsons, like picking. Like, I've got like an excuse in my head. If anyone asks what I'm doing, I'll say, Oh, I'm just looking for Simpsons, my little brother, or my little sister, or my little brother. But no, it's for me. For me. Love them. Love it. No shame. Yeah, you've no got shame. to invent someone, haven't you? I'm, I'm always shopping for my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. It's for me. <laughs> woo, woo. Uh, anyway, I think we should end the podcast there. Unless you've got anything else you want to discuss with me before we uh, let it go. Let it go. Let it anything, go. Anything else you want to discuss? Uh, I don't think so. Well, then let's get hey, out Col- of here. There is, actually, Colin. Oh, oh what, Colin, what, there is what? one thing. What? What? How could people get in touch? Oh, there's so many ways. I'm glad you asked. They can get in contact by emailing heroesofhandheld at gmail.com. They can tweet us at Handheld Podcast on Twitter. You can find us on all the social media channels, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, as I've already said. Um, where else? You can go on our website, heroesofhandheld.wordpress.com, and go to the Contact Us page and then you can fill out the little form you can review us on itunes you can review us on stitcher you can just download our podcast and keep them forever wherever good podcasts are sold <sighs> anything else you'd like to say chris peace and love peace and love i did not have sexual relations with that woman anyway uh thank you for listening everybody we'll be back soonish i think oh, yeah oh yeah i need to talk to you about that Yes, we'll talk off air. Thank you for listening, everybody. Back next week or at some point in the near future. But thank you for listening. Goodbye.